There, there is a growing interest in this topic. I don't, I don't even know if you saw. I put a tweet out about it the other day about the fact that we're meeting to talk. I did. My buddy sent that to me. He did. He said, oh, is this you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a, can you look it up? Because you know, the interesting thing about that is, mm-hmm. uh, I think it was like over, liked over a thousand times. Yeah. I think it was. Um, and the interesting thing thing about that is, I I have noticed over the last year or two, mm-hmm. and I think it's because as Bitcoin grows, yeah, it's reaching more people, sure, and therefore it's going to reach more people from the left, the right, this, and every, every, yeah. everything, and they're going to come into Bitcoin, right. and those people who, you know, some people uh, their their political ideology might change, they might become disinterested in politics, right. or, or perhaps some people who were previously on the left will move to the right, but there are people from the left who are have a growing interest in this, and I think it's, this is something that I've been trying to help people recognize and say, look, this is going to grow. We right. shouldn't see these people as the enemy. We should right. see them as people we can engage with and right. talk to them about it. But have you found it? Yeah, is I just it, found it. Yeah. It, yeah. Oh. yeah, there's some very good progressives coming to Bitcoin with new and interesting ideas. Next week I'm interviewing someone writing a Bitcoin book for progressive. Yeah. I think this is important work. So look at that. I mean, 1,090 likes. Yeah, so I have uh, a 1,000 friends out there. Yeah, for yeah. 1,000 friends. That's great. Some quote tweets. 1,091. Oh, 1, Go on the quote tweets, Dennis, see if anyone wants <laughs> a dick. Oh, I, they were because the screenshot that was sent to me included the very first. Uh, you know. <laughs> Progressive is a sugar-coated yeah, word yeah. for communist. The dude yeah. is a poser like Nikata. Yeah. Bitcoin is literally the antithesis of every left-wing ideology. <laughs> Bitcoin and progressive movement are mutually exclusive. Is Bitcoin about to go woke? Sounds very progressive to me. Yeah. Okay, keep going. Clown <laughs> and a dick. <laughs> All Bitcoin work. Hold on one second. All Bitcoin work is. It's important to work friends and enemies. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, the quote tweets. But that's typical. But I think if you go sure. into some of the comments, some of the comments were good and people are welcome to that. Yeah. Yeah. And and I and I and I think that the point you make is right. Um, is that for many years Bitcoin has existed with this very close knit, very homogenous group of people who all agreed with each other. And um, I'm not even saying that's wrong. Like I think that it probably in order to survive some of the attacks that um, that Bitcoin has undergone, like it needed to have that solidarity. Um, and so these libertarians who are fighting for the death for Bitcoin to make sure that it's, it exists and it's the way that they want it uh, is really helpful. But the umbrella is growing. And so if you think that you're going to be existing in the year 2030 thinking like, oh, yeah, like the government shouldn't exist. And like, you know, if you, anybody who thinks that there should be a government is like too far left, uh, you're not going to have a good time. Right. Like you're not going to exist in the Bitcoin space um, being able to make the same arguments that you were able to in, you know, 2014. It's it might not, be able to make the argument that it will be smaller because that, that is a that is a more realistic outcome, I think. Uh, sure. Yeah. And. and you know, and there's lots of things that might still match up, but you're not going to reach the people. You're not going to reach the same audience, right? There's a lot of people who are coming into Bitcoin, and that's, I mean, for me, that's the point, right? Like, it, it can't just stay this small group. If we want it to actually achieve the things we hope it achieves, then it has to be a bigger group and it has to be a wider discussion. And so, um, you know, I'm not trying to replace any of the ideology or the political viewpoints of anybody who's come before me. Um, I'm just trying to make sure that there's there's a lot of new people who will be coming into Bitcoin in the next five, 10 years who need a resource and who need to feel welcomed into the community. And that's what I'm trying to do. And to be honest, that one comment that really kind of irked me there is that uh, where he said Bitcoin is uh, antithetical to left-wing ideology. And I yeah. think that, uh, the reason that I have a problem with that is uh, the way I see it, both conservatives and progressives are actually collectivists. Yeah. Uh, and I think anyone who denies that needs to look at the stimulus checks that Donald Trump was writing and look mm-hmm. that uh, that even under a Republican government, you will yeah. pay tax and under that it will be redistributed. Right. Yes, it's a different area on the spectrum. Sure, yeah, yeah. But um, but I find that a, a, a difficult comment and also difficult because, you know, if you, you have to, you can't say it, you can't use it as a broad brush against the entire progressive ideology, but you can look at certain issues like wealth inequality. Yeah. Well, Bitcoin's good for wealth inequality. Sure. Yeah. Well, so, yeah. We hope. Right? Yeah. Well, we hope. Yeah. yeah but yeah. but, it, but if, if it is and, and it does and it should do it should because um, we knew, we we know with access to the money printer the rich get richer we have that wide right. wealth gap so we would hope under Bitcoin it, it, it does uh, lead to a, a more equal society not not in a Marxist way but in a in a just a fair monetary well, system. But but I think what that person has missed that that's just one argument. There's plenty of arguments. Right. I'm writing a whole book about it. You know. Book, like, <laughs> so I mean, yeah, wealth inequality is something that um, that absolutely Bitcoiners care about. 
um, and or mention and and as as a, like a staple argument. Um, and it is absolutely something that progressives care about. Um, and and there's lots of other examples too, uh, where like you know Bitcoin has the potential to help uh, with these progressive ideas, but it's not. You know, in order for that to be successful, it doesn't mean that like all of the libertarian or conservative ideas have to be wrong, right? I, I think that there's a lot in Bitcoin that might take like the best of, you know, from one side and the best of the other. Um, and I'm just focusing on on my side, right? My viewpoint and the people that I'm talking to who have a hurdle that they have to get over and making them try to feel like there, there's really a reason why I need to learn about this and that it helps the world. And that um, if I'm involved with it, then I can have a voice and I can have sort of a presence in the community. And why do you think for progressives that that Bitcoin isn't an, like an immediate uh, answer for them? Why do you think some progressives struggle with it to begin with? What do you think it yeah. is about it? Elizabeth Warren? Well, she, Senator, I, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, and, and that's, I mean, I, I'm being flipped, but it's, it's really that um, they haven't gotten a lot of information that's accurate or really explores through a progressive lens, what are the benefits of Bitcoin? And so um, if your first exposure to Bitcoin, well, everybody's first exposure to Bitcoin is to just, you know, they, they've heard about it and it's just some silly thing, right? If your second exposure to Bitcoin is, hey, it's a silly thing and it's also ruining the environment and it's just for, you know, rich people to get richer or something like that. And, and all of these untruths that are out there, um, then you're just gonna have a hesitance, right? And I, you know, I can speak for myself that, um, you know, like when I first started to, to think seriously about Bitcoin, like it was a very uh, open and closed case. It's for criminals. It's bad for the environment. And I can tell you from my own personal experience as a progressive person who cares about the environment, just being able to say that Bitcoin is bad for the environment flooded me with all of these happy brain chemicals because I got the guy across the table from me like, ah, what are you going to do now? Right. Like it's a it's open and closed case. And then you start to realize it's, it's actually much more difficult and much more intricate. And there's a lot of layers to it. And you have to dive deep. You can't just rely on these tropes of like, okay, I'm on the left. So anything that's bad for the environment, I'm just going to hate whether or not it's true, whether or not I looked into it myself. And, you know, similar things happen on the left. But like, I can tell you when I said that to, to the other person across the table, like, I felt very proud of myself, right? <laughs> you know, like, but that, that's where people are right now, you know, on both sides. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Um, and, and for me, it's one of the most fascinating things that's happened over this last year or two is how that that narrative is starting to change for Bitcoin with regards to the environment. Mm -hmm. When we, we can avoid the, I mean, I think, I, I always think that first starting point with bad for the environment is relative how relative this is in terms of percentage and the mm. arguments for you know, bitcoin versus gold and what gold has done to the environment and then yeah. you know energy uses for things like tumble dryers and christmas lights sure, like you can get into sure. all of that but one of the, yeah. the more fascinating things is the uh, advancement of mining not only to integrate with the grid mm -hmm. which we've seen uh, most recently with our car and i'm not sure how that will be possible with other grids around the world but it is an interesting thing but the couple of shows we've made recently um particularly the show we made uh, recently with Adam Wright, who's looking to put uh, miners on landfill sites to yeah, turn methane into yeah. Bitcoin. I mean, yeah. you actually have an argument to say, actually, no, here, we can give you an example where Bitcoin is good for the environment. Right. And, you know, I, I view it um, in sort of a three or four step process, right? So step one is any liberal or progressive that I talk to who says that Bitcoin is wasting energy or it's using too much, they don't even say using too much. They say it's wasting energy. It's because they don't understand the value proposition of Bitcoin, right? And so first and foremost, um, you have to understand why it's important to be able to have an honest discussion about the energy use. Um, and, and, you know, it's just as a thought experiment, right? Like if you say tomorrow, we can, you know, just as a, a thought experiment, we can cure cancer, but it uses a lot of energy. Well, what's the next thing? Yeah, let's cure cancer, but let, let's think about how can we make that energy better? Like, how can we make it more efficient? How can we make it more green, right? And so if you can take a look at Bitcoin and say, okay, well, it actually has a very positive social um, component. It actually helps make the world. It, the value proposition is worth the energy it's using. Then you go on to the next question, which is, how can I make it as efficient as possible? And are there incentives built into it to make it efficient? And we know that there are. And how can I make it as green and renewable as possible? Because and and are there incentives that will you know lead it down that direction? And then like the fourth step is well, 
Bitcoin actually does more than all of that. It provides opportunities to help mitigate some of the other damage that's happening and, um, and, and can actually improve the environment or make it more likely that other users of electricity are using green energy because Bitcoin miners have you know, supplemented the build out of renewable you know, sources. So now your clothes dryer is running more percentage on you know, solar or wind or something like that. So it's, it, I think it has to start from what, what's the use case? Why is it important? Because all of us, you know, I've, I've heard you say in the past, like, oh, I'm, I care about the environment, but I'm a hypocrite. Yeah. And it, the truth is we all are. And um, <laughs> well, if you care about the environment, then you're a hypocrite. But it's, it, that's not a functional like viewpoint, right? It's really more important to think about it as a scale. Mm-hmm. If you care about the environment, like what can you do in your everyday life to make it a little bit better? Um, what can you do in your, in your sphere of influence to make it a little bit better? And um, devote yourself to using energy in a way that is important for things, right? If it's important for you to fly across a country for whatever reason, then you're going to do that. I mean, we got rid of our private jet. Yeah, that's good. That's yeah. a good step. You're, yeah. you're inching. <laughs> yeah, we're inching. Yeah, we yeah we have yeah. one. We, we used to have one each. Me and Danny. But. No, that's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. That's the that's the progress that we need. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. j- j- yeah. um, we'll come back to energy. Sure. Um, yep. But what is that starting point then? You know, because essentially it's going to be the starting point of your book. What is what is the value proposition you're trying to get to people? Because yeah. I asked you earlier on, I was like, what was that kind of like wow orange pill in moment? Yeah. Honestly, one of my biggest wow orange pill in moments happened in the last year. And I've been making the show for five sure. years. Yeah. But we sat down with Jeff Booth in Austin. And Danny's going to know what we're going to talk about. Mm-hmm. And he explained the distortion of money to me. Yes. And how that creates malinvestment mm-hmm. and how that puts people in a position where they don't know how to understand the value of things. Right. And that to me was one of the most important things I've ever heard. D- despite the fact I learned how to use Bitcoin to get my mum a cancer treatment, right. despite the fact yeah. I was able to send money from to somebody in Japan who I can connect our bank accounts, all those things have all been important things. But that, that thing for me really stood out is that understanding the distortion of money that you have no control over. Of. Right. And we're seeing that now. Yeah. We see, we're just seeing this real devastating impact that, mm. that of the distortion of money over the last few years. What's your starting point? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think that there's a one sentence, right? I, course, I do yeah. think that Bitcoin has a potential to make the world more fair and just and equitable and peaceful. Um, and, and so I, I think that um, the, the example you just brought up with the distortion of money is, is an important one. Um, absolutely. If you, you can trace sort of price controls on money, which is what we're dealing with right now, right? Is, is price controls on money and who has access and, and all of that stuff. Of course, it has horribly damaging uh, side effects and sort of knock-on effects to a lot of people in society, especially the most vulnerable people who do not have access to a bank and who, do, I mean, I'm not even talking about internationally, like in America, people who like live in banking deserts where they need to go to, you know, uh, check cashing places and things like that. They just don't have access to the system. And so the value proposition of saying, all right, well, let's not manipulate the money anymore. Let's not manipulate the cost of money. Um, Let's not um, sort of build an entire system that's based off of that manipulation. Uh, That is a great starting point. And then we can sort of follow that thread, right? Because now what we're going to do is make the world more fair, right? Like nobody has necessarily a head start in this new system. Um, And, you know, we can make the world more just and we can actually use uh, Bitcoin uh, for things that we can't use fiat for. And all of those things kind of build up into an argument um, that makes it worth it, right? And, and say, if we, if we take this seriously and we learn about it and we all sort of work hard to make sure that like the vision of our future that can be better is better, then it's, it's absolutely worth it. Because the other option is to just sort of like, you know, what, use the system we've got until it crumbles, you know, <laughs> and, and like everybody's, you know, well, fairness is, a, fairness is a, an interesting word as well because we know policymakers have, whether they believe or not, have tried to make the world fair. And there's often that debate about uh, equal opportunity yeah. or equitable outcomes. Now, I sure. think generally speaking, equitable outcomes are, are ones that most people disagree with. But equal opportunity, there is fair argument to say, how do we create equal opportunity? But the world is not a fair place. I mean, no. you know, we we are born into different geographies, different parents, we have different access. But the great thing about the fairness of this protocol is when you talk about fairness, what we're talking about is a single set of rules that everyone has to play by. And no one can manipulate those rules. So it doesn't matter whether you're the left or the right. It's something very hard to argue against because if you're arguing against it, you're basically arguing to create a set of rules to either benefit you or other people, which is bullshit. 
it kind of is, right? Yeah. And then, that, it, like, as an American, like, this has been going on for 50 years, right? And I've benefited from it in ways that I don't even know, right? So, um, you know, as an American citizen who has had an opportunity to work really hard uh, to go from, you know, essentially, like, working poor you know, levels of poverty to having, you know, a, a successful career and a happy life, like, Part of that is because of the U.S. dollar is the world reserve currency, and that gives America a lot of benefits. And you know, as somebody in my position, I benefited from that. You know, I don't know that my next jump is well, taxation is you know theft, right? Like I'm I'm benefiting from the system, and a lot of people are. Well, a lot of people are benefiting a lot more than me, um, and there's people who are struggling, right? And so a, a more fair system is absolutely important. And of course, there's a lot of people who will get you know. I, I, you know, get onto a, a Bitcoin interview and they'll say, oh, I'm, I'm really for equal opportunity, but not equal outcomes. And it just seems so like, you know, well, it's what a tautology, you know, but, you know, not pe people aren't equal. I get that. But like, we're so far away from equal opportunity. Like, it's not even funny. You know, it's, it's like people are really just being suppressed. And it depends on, you know, uh, your gender, your race, your sexuality, all of those things that like people are going to like, you know, kill me on Twitter for even mentioning. Like, Don't check the YouTube uh, comments. I will not. <laughs> Fuck this you guy. Know, but that's important. Like, that's an important lens through which to look at that. There's a lot of people right now who don't have equal opportunity. So like that conversation is almost hollow in the sense that, well, yeah, anybody, it, it's not a very brave opinion at all. I'm for equal opportunity. We're so far away from that in the system. It's, it's, it's actually... Um, you know, horrible. Um, so if, if I can sort of latch on to a system that I think moves us in the right direction, then, you know, I'm going to be all for that.